Welcome everyone. This is Science Bridge webinar series, Bigger How Full. And my guest today is Wolfgang Frank. He's going to be our newest addition to the coaching network. And uh, I'm very excited to have him on our team because Wolfgang specializes in something called neuro-linguistic programming. And he is advanced certified neurozone coach practitioner, focusing on mindfulness and performance. So uh, welcome, Wolfgang. Thanks, Martina. Good to be here. Well, uh, as I said, I'm very excited to have this chat with you because now we can uh, tell people what does it mean to be a neuro-linguistic programming coach and uh, what do you specialize in? So let's maybe start from there. What is your coaching background? Yeah, so my uh, coaching background started in... 2017 um that's when i did my initial coach training um, which was also an uh, an icf um, certified program uh, icf is the international coach federation um, it's the the biggest global organization um, around and uh yeah so, so i did my um, coach training there the coach training was um was based on the schools of psychology, the, the most popular schools of psychology, um, to give you um, a broad approach uh, and, a, and a broad spectrum on, you know, what psychology is all about, what mental health is all about, and where coaching fits in with that. Um, after that, I completed a course in neuro-linguistic programming, um, um, NLP, short, short for that, um, and that is basically looking at, and it's also been around since the 70s, 1970s, um, it's, it's an approach that is called a, a, it's a pseudo-scientific approach based on basically how we, um, how we view the world. And we all have, uh, a, and we all have a different way of viewing the world. Um, our realities differ from each other because we've been raised differently. We um, we each have a had a unique um, set of parents or caregivers um, in in a different cultural setting or a religious setting, um, um, different countries. You know, I mean, you name it. it it's quite a a unique upbringing and that upbringing has given you a set of values uh moral values core values um a view of the world um and that tends to stick um in our heads as an adult even though we we think we we are quite um uh in and in, in well we're an individual we have our own way of thinking and we we question things but we still do that um, with these filters in our heads and so that could present as a problem um, in 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 terms of you know not being as open-minded as you think you were for example um, and also battling with some you know past issues past trauma if it if, if that's the case um, and not being able to move forward because you kind of like stuck in the way you think so what Neuro-linguistic pro programming does is neuro looking at the brain where the filters are sitting, uh, linguistic using language um, to in, in a therapeutic space to, to um, use language to trace back and look forwards um, and to almost in a sense reprogram your filters, reprogram your brain going through um a process of reassessing all all the values that you currently have and and making them into new, a new set of values that do serve you so that's pretty much the the in a nutshell nlp or neuro-linguistic program okay so so giving an example would that be um if you're coming from cer certain cultural background and um i'll give my personal example like i come from poland and i moved to south africa now i have to adapt to the new situation is that something that it would help with um absolutely it, it it's about broadening broadening 
your perspective, um, making you, you more aware of the fact that there are other ways of viewing the world. They yes. are also, you know, because it's, it's kind of like becoming more aware of um, the, the other people around you, especially when your context changes. Um, it, it, and that makes it, that's the thing that makes it quite difficult to settle in into a different context, especially if you move countries. So, so for instance, one would be example of moving countries, but the other one would be just job transitioning. And when you are transitioning from scientific in environment in academia to scientific environment in industry, I guess that would also be quite a big jump and that could assist with, um, with viewing the world and in communication with your new uh, colleagues, right? Absolutely. Uh, it's about broadening the mind. Um, and uh, getting that understanding of uh, needing to adjust um, in, in, in different contexts, yeah. uh, in understanding that you can't necessarily apply your own set of rules to every situation. Yes. Um, and also being aware of the fact that it's also not only you who's living in, the, in your reality, there are other people and structures, societies, organizations that form a part of that. And it's so important to understand um, where, where you, you know, what those set of rules are and, and how and where you fit in um, into that structure. I like that saying that people say that you, um, if I don't butcher it now, that you are um, reflection of average of five people that you are surrounding yourself with so uh let's say you have five people that you interact the most with which is let's say your mother your partner your best friend and two colleagues that you interact most with and then um your reflection of them in a way and then when you move transition to the new space i guess it has to change Absolutely. I, I can't butcher that because <laughs> it is exactly what it is. It, um, it, we, we are, you know, in a maybe a more esoteric way of looking at it. We, we are who we, um, it's a, it's a sort, sort of like a reflection. The people that we surround ourselves with mm -hmm. is a reflection of us. So, because it is so easy for us, I think it all comes to a sense of belonging we feel that we need to belong in a certain space so we will we will in some cases then adopt um, a set of values or um, a, a behavioral pattern from from our context or some or another person in order to feel that we belong so that mm -hmm. we don't get ostracized from that community or context so that's very valid it's um, you are on point there yeah, and you are also the Neurozone um, coach. So what does it mean? What is Neurozone? Yeah, so, so that's quite a new development for me. Um, I have uh, completed a course with Neurozone, who, which is a company that provides um, solutions to um, the individual group or team, as well as organizations to, um, as a neuroscientific approach to um, basically optimize your brain and body system. So from the individual to the organization, understanding um, exactly what is needed in order to um, become a, um, your version of a high perform performing individual. <laughs> and how do you do that? Like, <laughs> it sounds cool. very abstract, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. so that is the abstract, if you want to call it uh, that. So the and the and how you would do that is basic, basically by using the the neurozone uh, personal report that they've developed. Um, it's basically just a questionnaire, very similar to um all these uh tools that uh, coaches use these days and even therapists as well um where they would generally um give you a questionnaire in order to get your um personality for example or your communication style or to show out your strengths 
So what the Neurozone personal report does is to basically give you your behavioral code um, or a performance code. And that is all based on um, 10 drivers that they've identified, which is important for you, for your brain body system to be optimized. These 10 drivers, um, and even though it, it, you know, it's a neuroscientific approach, so it is all based on fact, um, but these are also things that is not new to us. We are just being reminded of the basic stuff that is needed uh, for us to perform better um, in order to uh, manage stress um, up to a point where you would like to avoid burnout, which has become the number one enemy in, in organizations, especially in the corporate structure um, in the world. Um, to build resilience, which it has become the, the most important thing these days during the pandemic. Um, to, uh, you know, resilience meaning that moving, it's not about falling and, and getting up again, it's about falling and getting up differently, transforming yourself into uh, an, an individual that will be able to, um, uh, go through another pandemic, being prepared, knowing what needs to happen. Um, and uh, so building resilience, um, also increasing your uh, problem solving capacity and self-leadership. Um, so all of these things, um, well, is obviously needed to be a high performer, a performing individual. And if everyone uh, if, if every individual, especially an organization, are optimized at the individual um, state, then the organization can start thriving. And we will understand what, it, what an organization needs in order to thrive. So just to come back to the, the 10 drivers that they've identified, um, as I said, quite basic. Um, you look at the foundational drivers, uh, which is needed to have a strong foundation. That's exercise, nutrition, sleep-wake cycle, and silencing the mind. Um, these all then relate to our high-performance rhythms, if you want to call it that, which is, is so important these days to um, speak to those rhythms which is needed in order to function better and also reduce um, the amount that you get sick uh, during the year to increase your immunity also so important these days um, not only these days but I mean it's become so prevalent for us to be healthy individuals um, and but especially the the silencing the mind rhythm um, I mean this is also not something new but I think it's been quite neglected over yeah. the years yeah, absolutely. And, and um, I think, you know, if you look back, uh, you know, a few millennia, it's, it's been there already, but it, um, I wouldn't, I, I won't say it was, or maybe it was a part of our rhythms to, to make time to quiet your mind, to get back into control again. But it's become so important these days because, uh, because of the information overload, we are living in an information era where we are almost automatically feeding ourselves with just more and more information without consciously um, taking it in. It's just kind of like a lot of noise in our heads and we, we, we haven't really uh, appreciated the fact that um, it, this is not normal, <laughs> you know. I think about um, it as a, in terms of, you know, um, students where, where you have all the social media and you have, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or TikTok these days, and um, you're basically scrolling and watching and constantly getting some information, but you are not um, actually silencing yourself. You're doing a procrastination when you're scrolling through, uh, let's say, TikTok, but um, but it's not relaxing your mind. 
Exactly. Uh, you, you, it's, we've, we've always, we've almost been, um, and not almost, I think we are actually uh, fooling ourselves thinking that, okay, I'm going to take um, some time off from studying, for example, and then scroll through social media as a means of relaxing. Yeah. But as you just pointed out, that is not really putting your, your um, brain or body into relax. Okay, your body may be relaxed, but you are just feeding yourself with, with all sorts of junk um, yeah. that, that is not really appropriate or, um, or healthy. Or useful <laughs> um, at or that useful. moment, yeah. Exactly. So yeah, I mean that that they've put emphasis on silencing the mind um, as a rhythm and as a as a driver um, to optimize your brain and body to be able to become um, you know a better problem solver. To and actually the key word here is mindfulness. To become more mindful um, daily in everything that you do um, and and becoming more mindful will help you in so many areas. Um, I mean, just in terms of reducing your anxiety, um, helping with um, substance abuse, um, becoming a better sort of more, you know, um, changing the focus from your uh, amygdalas uh, to your prefrontal cortex so that, so that you can just make better executive decisions. Um, and just getting more into control of life because I'm sure so many of us are just feeling a bit lost and out of control. Um, so yes, mindfulness um, throughout this, this um, uh, brain and body optimization is always the key word. Go through this whole process mindfully to actually become conscious of your behavior. And then when, once you're conscious of your behavior, then only you can start to make the changes that are necessary. Okay, so so if, if we are talking about the process that you're going through with your clients, how does it work? So when you get a new client, what do you do first? Okay, what I do first is, um, and if you don't mind, can I just complete the 10 drivers? So I've only- Oh, uh, sorry, yeah, of course, drivers. of course. That's yeah. okay, but, so I'll, I'll, I'll try and um, uh, go a bit quicker through these. So the next three are all about the emotional drivers. And the emotional drivers are necessary, again, for a sense of belonging and trust, basically. Um, those three drivers are um, called social safety. That's the one that builds uh, belonging, trust, identity. Um, you know, especially if you, are um, looking for uh, or looking to place yourself into a company um, or you're looking for a job um, or you are already in working for a company but you feel you, you're not quite sure what your role is you don't know what your identity is um, um, so that in a, a professional setting as well as in a, in a personal setting um, having friends that you who, who um, understand you where you feel you do belong uh, and a family structure as well is so important for us to to um, feel that we have a purpose yeah. um, then uh, goal directedness which is uh, uh, you know bringing it back to yourself and talking about self-leadership for example that is also all about motivation um, motivation to to do a task or complete a task and then the energy needed to do that as well um, this could be something as basic as getting up in the morning and um, feeling um, excited to to fulfill your purpose uh, which is so important because especially again to bring it back to uh, what's happened to the society during lockdown, being isolated, you um, being isolated from people, you kind of like lose the energy because we are energized by working together. We, we need each other. Uh, the, the, the emphasis here is that we cannot do life on our own. We need each other. Um, and that this brings me to collective creativity where 
we collectively need to create things to become innovative to um, solve uh, problems in a more innovative innovative way more creatively and that in, in itself will also boost your energy because you are achieving something together um, and then uh, it brings you to the higher order drivers um, which has all got to do with prefrontal cortex operation um, that is the importance of learning um, always being curious always um, um, knowing that the more you learn the more you know the better you'll be able to solve a problem the more you know of a, of a subject um, the more you know of life the the better your perspective the bigger the picture abstraction as another driver also a very important uh, driver for problem solving and innovation and creativity it's all about how you how can you um, create better representational uh, systems in your mind of um, what whatever you are working with and then the 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 last driver executive function again the sort of almost like being a air, a air traffic controller knowing exactly where and what should go um, and sort of having the bigger picture over the whole system so those are the 10 drivers a lot of those uh, 10 drivers sound relatable to Maslow's pyramid of needs. Is that where it's taken from some of it? Yes, one could see it in that way where you have the foundational drivers at the bottom, the emotional drivers in the middle speaking to, you know, the sense of belonging, safety, um, and then the higher order drivers, um, which is innovation and, um, you know, active being able to actualize and activate yourself um the the reason why i um and neurozone themselves also don't um put it in a hierarchy hierarchical, hierarchical system like that is because everything affects everything so it would be better to view it as a circle where you could connect all the drivers together because um you know for example if you your um, sleep pattern is terrible, then you won't be able to um, function executively. For example, if you, uh, or you may be um, very good at um, using your prefrontal cortex as a tra air traffic controller, but um, you are uh, you are suffering from chronic stress because you don't have time to exercise or cook your own meals or um, your job's very stressful, so you lose sleep and you don't make time to silence your mind, for example. So everything is kind of connected with one another and are um, viewed as important on its own. Well, it's all very relatable, I think, to scientists because you are losing sleep as a scientist. It's very stressful and uh, you often don't have time to exercise or you just don't make that time yourself because you constantly think about your experiments and the fact that you have to go to the lab on the weekends so you don't have your weekends. So it sounds very, very relatable and uh, to the struggles of scientists in academia, to be honest. So, so I'm glad that we are talking about it. So yeah, so can we go back to how mm. you approach a new client then? So yes, how, how to approach a new client. Um, in the beginning, it would, it would uh, before you get into all this juicy, all these juicy bits, um, it is about hearing from the client what, what their problems are, their issues, or you know, what is bothering them at the moment. Um, then as well, listening to what the goals are. So, um, that's it's always important to be goal directed um to have an intention of what is what is needing to be achieved or what you would like to achieve throughout this journey so um you know you you may come with a certain um set of problems something that you would like to address uh, maybe you have a few goals that you would need to achieve. Maybe those goals are already there for you. It's, it's your PhD that you need to complete. So it's a goal in itself. But then 
Um, the goal is then actually, well, how do you achieve that? How do you make sure that you don't burn out by the time you finish your PhD? Um, so it's it's all about, you know, it's all about you. So listening to getting your narrative. Um, what 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 makes you tick? Who are you as a person? So um, it's really getting to know that person and, and then slowly but surely my job is to uh, make you more aware of the things that you are saying. So it's very much a reflective process, um, a share, sharing of knowledge together. I mean, I um, I might be the expert in what I um, I can offer you, but you are also the expert in your field. So it's getting you to also understand who you are. Um, so starting with your, your your you know defining yourself, and then unpacking that slowly but surely looking at the behavioral patterns that, that don't serve you anymore and um, how to become conscious of that and then build or break down habits that will then eventually help you to achieve your goal and also become a high-performing individual. I think it goes really well together with your neuro-linguistic programming because uh you learn about the patterns that we bring from our cultures from our past into our present and future and that's what needs to be kind of this disassembled and reassembled again for something that's going to serve us in the future so so mm. it sounds very interesting and useful uh, but you're saying that the process is uh, you're taking it slow so how many sessions people can expect on average to get to feeling comfortable well, um, I would recommend, so um, it could be anything between, it also depends on, so I also have, um, I always offer a session before we start, which I don't charge for. Um, it's, a, it's so valuable to um, have that discussion before you start with the journey to, uh, you know, it's uh, the opportunity to get to know one another, to, uh, for the client to see, oh, okay, I relate with this person I relate with with me um, and I would definitely like to work with that person there, there should definitely be that opportunity for 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 um, both the coach and the coachee to make that call of okay I like what I what I hear and I would love to go further um, and then also for me to to see how I could best help you so um, I would then uh, send you a proposal and that could be anything from seven to 12 sessions. Um, those seven to 12 sessions can um, be uh, spaced out between one to two weeks. It's all, uh, um, and, and that will sort of work out to anything from two to six months. Um, it's all um, based on the coaches availability it's, it's based on their, um, yes, the availability of, you know, if they're working full-time, for example, then it would be recommended to do one, uh, a session once every second week. If they are um, not that busy and it's quite important for them to get these beha this behavioral change going, then you could do it once a week. So I would say roughly anything, you know, if you look at seven sessions, it could be um, two to three months. If you look at 12 sessions, could be three to, to six months. Um, it is up to the coachee to then also manage that um, spacing of the sessions. Now, of course, it sounds like uh, you're basically doing everything according to what coaching needs. And, and that's the most important, I guess, in your mm -hmm. practice and in your job. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, exactly. But I also I've I've noticed with some clients is if you don't also remind them and push them a little bit, then <laughs> you know they um, seem to lose momentum. So I also um, provide that. You know, um, uh, I will let you know. Hey, I haven't booked your session yet. Um, we need to keep momentum. Um, you know, what's up, what's going on? Please talk to me. Um, just always remember you, it's. Even though you are in control of managing the process as well, I'm always there. Uh, you know, if there's a problem, uh, please let me know. Uh, let's let's work it out. Life happens. I mean, nothing nothing's perfect. 
Yeah, so it's it's a bit of a carrot and a stick situation, but at the end of the mm. day, the carrot is the goal of a coachy. So, mm. so I guess that's the most important thing. Well, thank you so much for this chat, Wolfgang. And uh, as I said earlier, you are going to be part of our coaching network, so you are available mm -hmm. there. But is there any other way for coaches to future clients to contact you? Uh, yes, they are welcome to um, have a look at my website just to see uh, look at the options I've got to offer. I have a contact page there which will take them directly to my email address. Um, I'm sure you've you've got my details as well. Um, yes, but I will include your website as well in the description of this video. Yes, and uh, if you know if there's any any way for me to make it easier for for clients or coaches to uh, get a hold of me, please let me know. If if you need my my phone number or uh, email address directly, um, you're welcome to to get that from me. And um, yeah, I'm also on available on LinkedIn, on um, Instagram, Facebook. So most of the platforms you'll be able to to find me. Okay, fantastic. So I'm going to include that in the description of this video below and we are staying in touch and welcome to the network. Awesome. Thank you very much. And thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.